I think the, the coolest part. Click on the little sandwich button, scroll down, you can see your members, all the events, but the mini master classes, that's what's gonna set this apart, along with the master classes that are coming. But now you can click on the mini master class that you like. It's broken down into sections. You've got the process here. You can scroll down, watch the video if you want. They're not very long, they're about five minutes each. And you can go and click on the PDF, and there you have all the notes for that specific mini master class to me. Looks like we're live. So, hey, everybody, welcome back to another market update with David Childers from Keeping Cart Matters. And today we're going to be talking about the interest rates. We're going to be talking about listings that are surging or not surging, but coming to the market. And mm -hmm. we're going to be getting a forbearance update with some, I think, excellent news yeah. uh, from that. So, David, welcome, man. How are you? I'm great. It's good to be back on a Friday with you, Johnny. And uh, here on Lab Code Agents, you know, I was looking at here in the, in the chat, Emily from Tampa. See you there, Emily. Thanks for, for putting that in there. Let us know where you're, where you're watching from. Jake from Ventura. You know, Johnny, we don't talk enough about Jake. Without Jake, this doesn't happen. So, Jake, shout out to you. Thank you for all you do to put these together and get these things going. Vegas. Las Vegas. Priscilla. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot happening out there in the market, Johnny, a lot to talk about. We'll bring the graphics like we always do and, uh, you know, talk about what's happening. You know, there's, there's certainly a lot happening in the world with, you know, talk of inflation, talk of recession, you know, war, uh, all the things going on. So a lot of people are going, you know, what's going to happen in the real estate business, um, you know, uh, over the next year, uh, months to come. So. There's a lot happening. And, you know, the truth is, um, I can't even type, uh, ask is a question. Uh, hey, uh, um, we can't predict. We can't predict. We're unprecedented times. Every minute that goes by, every day that goes by is new territory, right? So mm -hmm. there's some things that are going on that we, don't, we just don't control. All we can do is respond. That's all that uh, we can do is respond. And what I love about these sessions with you is that you bring up real world content that we can discuss and we as agents can use to position ourselves as a knowledgeable resource yeah um, absolutely. and I, I think in this time where there's so many agents in and the inventory might be lower than normal uh, you really need to do everything you can to stand out to be that quote-unquote expert right yep yep so what are you seeing out there what, what's going on is the, is the market crashing yet <laughs> No, so what the newspapers say, oh, market's going to crash. Correction Tell me in the coming. chat here, is anybody seeing that? Is anybody's market crashing? Is anybody uh, seeing that? Or maybe what shift are you seeing? You know, Johnny, I think the biggest news um, just, you know, seems to be in, in our business, the Fed raising rates last week. Now, we've talked about uh, this, uh, you know, a lot. And uh, Johnny, everybody that's been watching this, you know, biweekly Friday session that we do knows that's not the mortgage rate, that's the Fed funds rate. Um, but that caused a lot of, you know, a lot of people to ask questions uh, in our business. And I think that makes sense. Um, you know, I, I'm not as concerned about the Fed right now as I am about inflation. And let's be clear, the Fed's action is to curb inflation. So just, just you know, that that's the, the, the truth there. Um, and, you know, you, you made a good point, Johnny, that nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody can say this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen next. But I do think it is impar uh, imperative for us to have an opinion based upon facts, an educated opinion, a factual based opinion uh, yeah. in what's happening. And one of the things that I think is true right now that is a fundamental of what we're experiencing is high inflation is the enemy of long-term interest rates. As long, as long as you see high inflation, you're gonna see higher interest rates. Now the Fed acts, curbs inflation, and you know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about that. Um, we'll start to see rates, you, you know, um, sort of get a little bit of relief, hopefully, but that's a combination lock. A lot of things go into 
know, the average 30 year fix, but we've certainly seen that uh, that risen. So let me give you a little perspective on that. A couple of slides, Johnny, and we'll talk. Um, Please said this while some additional Fed tightening is already baked in today's average mortgage rates. Ongoing inflationary pressure remains likely to push mortgage rates even higher in the months to come. Just what we talked about. Inflationary pressure pushing interest rates higher. And we've we've certainly seen that. The average 30-year fixed uh, right now at 5.3% had kind of rocket ship um, since the first of the year, you know, 12 uh, 30, the last uh, one of the days that uh, measured interest rates. Um, 3.1% in this country now up over 5.3%. You know, I was talking to a banker last week, Johnny, that was quoting in the high fours and a broker that was quoting in the high fives. You certainly see, uh, you know, differences in the rates that are being quoted uh, right now. That's why, you know, some people may look at that and go, well, I'm seeing interest rates a lot higher than that, or I'm seeing them lower than that. That's why different folks are quoting that, uh, th those average 30 year fix. But, you know, no doubt the impact to the consumer to finance the amount needed to go out and buy, uh, buy a home has been impacted dramatically. You know, if you're not talking about this, I do believe this is something we need to be vocal about in our business. Just educate those that are thinking about buying. You know, we wrote a blog post uh, on this at Keeping Current Matters, how today's mortgage rate impacts your home purchase. I think it's something that we need to uh, to get out there, record a video on, you know, Johnny, the things that we talk about um, yeah. doing and getting the message out there. But but no doubt it's making it, uh, you know, more expensive for folks to go out and buy a home with a rise in interest rates. And we've covered that uh, pretty well at Keeping Current Matters. But if you need information to share, you can go over there to the blog and, uh, and share that. Um, I'll show you one other slide that I think is, is sort of the sentiment in a lot of places. I, I, I tend to disagree with it, but I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. It says, already recent housing market, market data has shown the massive effect the surge in rates has had on home buyers. The pandemic boom in home sales is over and the activity is back to pre-pandemic levels. I'm going to bring some stuff up in just a minute to sort of dispute that, but that's from a market watch quote about what's happening in the business. But a lot of people, Johnny, asking, you know, what is going to be the impact of rising rates uh, in the uh, in the business? What's going on? Uh, Cheryl, I see your question there. I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, but I think that is the biggest topic right now in our business, the the, the effect of rising rates, making it less affordable uh, for those to go out and finance and buy a home. Yeah, and need more money, right? You just need more money. And money is costing more uh these days if you're holding on to it it's worth less every day that goes by because of inflation right um what, anything on inflation uh, and what do we i mean inflation's rising rates are going to rise so what sure. you're saying is until we see that curve one way we're probably not going to see it curve the other way yeah i i think the listen anybody that's saying this is the one thing that's going to be the predictor of interest rates is mm -hmm. you know I, I would call that into question even people that are professionals that we follow that are experts on mortgage-backed securities, the secondary market, they don't know what's going on. That's the truth right now. They're looking at it saying, what, what's going to happen? You know, let's just think about what, what, what all goes into the economic picture, instability in the world. We know, we know that. Who knows what's going to happen there? COVID could play a role in this. We don't know what's going to happen there. Certainly don't want to see that come back. If, if COVID were to surge this summer, you would see relief in rates likely. Don't want that. We None of us want that, right? Nice. Anywhere. Um, you, you think about the Fed's action inflation. That's playing effect. You think about the Fed's bond purchase program. That was playing um, uh, into you know the market the last two years. Well, what did they come out and say? They said they're going to now... Uh, become a seller, not a buyer, a seller. So we've seen a massive shift there. So a lot of things going into that uh, uh, that projection, but I think the general consensus is that the Fed's going to act. The Fed is going to get uh, inflation under control. It's all, you know, hope that I believe they will. And the question is where you see everywhere is, is this going to trigger recession? You hear the soft land, can they engineer a soft landing? Uh, it gets harder and harder that, you know, the more they have to act, the more they have to respond. If we go into recession, what do we know? We'll get relief on interest rates inside of that. So a lot of things happening there. I think the perspective that I would have is that, you know, right now, uh, inflation is what is driving interest rates higher. Uh, and depending on what you believe about the Fed's action there, 
uh, is what, what we're going to see as far as inflation. Cheryl yeah. asked a question here. Are you going to say something, Johnny? I was just going to say there's a lot of things that go into this that we don't even know that never happened before. And one of those, you know, things that can or cannot play out, we don't know because it's never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to wait and see is ICE, International Currency Exchange, who bought whoever they were, Sally May, Ellie May, whichever the one that handles the mortgage uh, in 2020 for 11 billion. Uh, they're acquiring Black Knight now mm. for $23 billion, right? Billion with a B, which is another servicer uh, software system and everything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So here, here are, here's a major player, right? That nobody's ever even heard of, yeah. whose direction and things that they're doing could have an impact in the mortgage world one way or another. So we don't really know. We can really go by historic data, traditional data, and those types of things. But I think there's still a lot of uh, wait and see that's going to happen. But yeah. what we know for sure is interest rates are going up. They, they, they're they not going down. So get out there and get it wrapped up as soon as possible. And that's the message that I'd be telling. I'd be yeah. saying that to my sellers and I'd be saying that to my buyers through a video. And if you're all on, on TikTok, get on TikTok and take a look at Keeping Current Matters video because David's really doing an excellent job. Hats off to you. The team, the team gets them out there. Right, let me go back to that. You mentioned ICE. They bought Ellie May which was whatever it was a year ago, I can't remember the time frame, which is the largest uh, by market share, I believe, loan origination software. So you think about loan applications going into the process, that's who I spot. Um, so let me go back to Cheryl's questions. Are the arms still a viable option? You know, I've looked at pricing on a five and seven year arm. I think it's very, very good right now. I think it is a very viable option in financing. You know, they sort of, 2008 arms got a got a bad rap as you, you know a lot of people went into arms in homes and mortgages they couldn't qualify for maybe homes they couldn't afford rates adjusted and there were issues there that was not the you know um uh arms were not the cause of 2008 let me say that um the cause of 2008 was primarily loose lending standards you know, folks didn't have to qualify for a home loan, essentially, you know, no, no income, no job, no verification. And then the second contributing factor was people um, uh, cashing out all their equity, repositioning equity. There was a term back then called equity harvesting, when uh, people would take equity from the home, reposition it into, you know, different funds or investments, things like that. And it turned out, uh, you, you know, terribly like we know. But I think arms are a very viable option for financing in this market. Um, you know, I don't think it's a bad product. It was maybe in some cases a misused product uh, back in 2008. But I, but I think there are people that look at the carrying cost of a mortgage and say, you know what, we may be in the house five or seven years, or we believe in the next five or seven years, we'll see a you know, refinance cycle that we can refinance in. But I, I do think it's a, a very good option. Yeah, absolutely. great question. Let's uh, let's continue on. Let's talk a little bit about uh, about activity because that that last quote that I used said the boom is over, so to speak. I I, I don't agree with that, and here's you know, primarily one of the reasons for that. Love to see your chat or the comments or questions here. You, you know, latest information from showing time, which is March. We're about three and a half to four percent uh, in the average thirty year fixed in March, but showing still crush pre-pandemic numbers. I don't think you're going to see that come down dramatically, but we will see the market moderated by rising interest rates and no doubt seeing that across the country. But I would add in the comments, you know, what are you seeing? Are you seeing still multiple offer scenarios where you're at? And I think most people are, unless you say, no, that's totally uh, stopped. I see there, um, uh, Pollyanna there, uh, still multiple offers over asking here in SoCal and preferred areas, um, no doubt. But, but we are starting to see a shift in some listings, you know, so, so strong demand there. Um, new monthly listings coming to market for the first, you, you know, we've seen new listings rising uh, for the last four months. April was the first month where we outpaced just slightly, if you see here in the blue, uh, 2021. So we're ahead of what we're bringing in new listings to the market as of April. So that's a good sign, right? We want to see more listings come to market, more people put their homes on the market. Here's a look, Johnny, at a slide that we've used, you know, we've gone over this before, and you see here we're, we're, we're ahead of where we were the last couple of years in new listings coming to market. 
uh, and, and we want to see that continue to climb, right? We want to see uh, inventory replenished across the country. And, you know, if rising interest rates sort of moderate the market and we see more inventory come to market, we can hope to get closer maybe to a balanced market and not see the, the frenzy that's in the market, which I think would be a good thing. Um, another look here. You were going to say something, Johnny? Uh, no, I'll, I'll say mine till the end. I just said I agreed with you. Go ahead. Yeah. Active listings, though, still very low, below where we were even last year. You see, we want to see that number climb and, uh, again, the, the inventory to be replenished. I think the best way to say it, Daniel, Hell, so there's, there's a long uphill climb to balance the balance market, but it starts with heading in the right direction, and April data shows a lot of promise. And I think that's what we want to see is, is we want to see promise in the market. We want, we want to see these good signs come of more inventory and things like that. So well, um, somebody posted in the, the lab codes group a couple of days ago, a week ago or so that this, that, that the lend, not the lenders, the builders, not all of them just happen to be in the area saying, Oh, they're offering X percent again yeah, yeah. from point X, right? We, we don't need to go into what the numbers are. And so, you know, begs the differ, you know, beg, begs to ask the question, did they see by getting greedy, did they see a negative impact from, I don't want to say agents had boycotted them or anything like that, because that'd be wrong, but did they see any kind of negative backlash from doing that? Yeah. You know, so yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing. So if you're watching this, post in the comments, if you're on Zoom, put them in the Zoom comments, you know, what are you seeing in your area with new construction? Are they still playing games or, or are they offering some level of enticement for you to bring your buyer? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's, there, there's no doubt the cost to buy a new home is surging. It's costing more to buy a new home than it is an existing home. Uh, and I think that they are going to have those scenarios where they have to do something different to entice people. But I'd love to hear from those on the call if, you know, if builders are acknowledging and, you know, uh, engaging in relationship and engaging in um, uh, doing business together where th through the, you know, the pandemic and, Hey, just people walk into a sales center. They said, Hey, we don't need you. Um, there was a lot of that going on, but, but I think they're going to have to come up with incentives. They're going to have to come up with things to entice people to, to want to do that. I think they will too. Yeah, yeah. They need us, David. That is for sure. You know, the other topic that we mentioned, uh, some good news came out this uh, past week on forbearance. You know, we've covered this Johnny extensively those that uh you know have, uh, had a tough time during the pandemic that needed yeah. uh, the forbearance of their mortgage payment uh during uh, a tough financial time and and you know we're starting to get some numbers at the tail end of this uh, i'll share some of those with you because i think this is an important thing you know as people hear more information they talk about crash they wonder about that having that perspective like you just mm -hmm. brought up um is our job right here 92 percent of the 8.2 million homeowners who sought forbearance protection have exited those plans. Now, that's, that's, that's something we should cheer for, right? That's a good yeah. thing. Uh, the people are coming out of forbearance. We want that for anybody who may have been negatively impacted by um, COVID and, and the pandemic to come from those plans, to come you know, out of those. But just to give you a little bit of a, a, a you know, sort of a back in time lesson on forbearance, this is what this looked like starting out. If you remember, we've, we've used this slide, I've updated it. 30% was the original forecast of those that would go into forbearance. And essentially that, that was said, you know, if, if you go into forbearance, you're not gonna be able to rebate, make, make your payments. We know the cure rate at 60, you know, uh, 90, 120 days. And, and if somebody misses their mortgage payment for six months, how can they ever recover from that? Every one of those is gonna turn into a foreclosure. Well, the actual peak was about eight, 0.6%, and right now it's 1.1% of mortgages in forbearance. That's excellent okay. news. What's that? It's excellent news. It's probably excellent. the best news I think we've had in a year. Excellent news. Yeah, we want to see folks come out of that, come off whole uh, from that. And, uh, and I'll go over those numbers here in just a minute of what that looks like of yeah. those that have come off. But, you know, you see this falling, uh, and I've seen it falling since May of 2020 when we, we started out uh, there and uh, right now just over 1% of mortgages in, uh, in that. that. That always begs the question, Johnny, what's going to happen when we come out of that? Are we going to see this rise in foreclosure? Um, we've talked about it on this um, Friday afternoon program, you know, be looking for the month over month increases in foreclosure, but they'll be a little bit misleading. They'll be accurate, but 
misleading in the fact that you know our foreclosures doubling tripling they're, they are doing that off extremely low levels um rick sharga from adam data said foreclosure activity has continued to gradually return to normal levels but even with the large year-over-year -year increases in foreclosure starts and bank repossessions foreclosure activity is still only running in about 57 percent of where it was in q1 2020 so that's you know sort of q1 2020 being our normal marker we're running at about 57 percent of that foreclosure activity and, and expect to see that that ramp up as we get to more normal uh, foreclosure numbers certainly we don't wish that upon anyone but it's a fact of our business the last quarter before the government enacted the consumer protection program due to the pandemic so that's what uh you, you know sort of the truth on the foreclosure activity right now call it 60 percent just shy of 60 percent of where we were uh prior to the pandemic we'll stay on top of that for you so that you have the best information because a lot of people sitting on the sidelines saying hey here come interest rates here come recession that means housing crisis i'm going to snap up a lot of foreclosures and i just don't see that happening and we can't probably say that enough uh, out in the market matter of fact the last two years in this country there were just over 400,000 fewer foreclosures to hit the market now it's because the moratorium on foreclosures uh for for you know the time during the pandemic and expect some of those to to come back into market but people have options today like we've talked about with the rising price of homes across the country they can sell they you know can do something and don't have to go into foreclosure so we certainly hope they can do that pay a commission and uh and, and avoid the the crisis or, or sort of you know soften the crisis maybe they and their family are facing right now but but i don't think that you know we're going to see this onslaught of foreclosures even with all the the, the pending economic information the scary things that are being talked about uh out in uh in the market the bottom line is foreclosures and seriously delinquent loans continue to decline to pre-pandemic levels um attributable to the strong housing market loss mitigation activities implemented by policymakers investors and mortgage servicers uh forbearance certainly did its job uh during the pandemic there are a lot of opinions about that should we be doing it shouldn't we be doing it but i think we can come and say that folks um you know were able to weather the storm using forbearance uh maybe some of that misuse but 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 certainly it was helpful in the market and uh it was something that people were able to leverage to get to the other side and i'm going to break down what happened to them through that but i also want to say one other thing we're at a low level in foreclosures and likely to see low, low levels of foreclosures going forward due to the the um, the pendulum swing in lending standards. So a more qualified borrower results in lower lending standards. And what happened after 2008, we saw that pendulum swing to more you know, qualified borrowers, tighter lending standards, and thus driving the number of foreclosures down. You know, if you look at that graphic, if you remember, I brought it up saw the peak in 2008 and this you know this kind of this fall up to today you know the last couple of years or anomaly years but even if you take that out you see lower foreclosures due to uh, a better qualified borrower for a home loan so sure. last I'm slide johnny then I'll, I'll turn it over to you we can talk a little bit uh those that have come out of forbearance uh this may look familiar too if you followed us uh here uh as we, we've done this uh for the last couple of years but 37%, this is as of March 31st, most recent data we have. 37% came out paid in full, 44.6 worked out a, you know, something with their bank. They tacked it on the end, they did a loan modification, rate and term refinance, whatever the case may be. And the moral of the story I always use on this, four out of five people coming out of forbearance, you know, have come out whole, you know, they didn't need it or they went through a workout with their bank. There are those that are still in trouble. Maybe they don't have a loss mitigation plan. They're already in some kind of short sale or deed in lieu. I believe there are options, excuse me, for those people today that they can uh, they they can sell their home. They can pay a commission, put a little bit of money in their pocket, and move to the you know the other side of the crisis they and their family are facing. So that is all the update on uh, foreclosures in this country. And you know certainly hopefully that helps you as you have you know conversations with people that may be saying we're going to wait for the foreclosures to come certainly don't see that happening if you want these slides you can email me david at keeping current matters.com if that helps you uh, if you have any questions drop them in there but johnny that's what what i had today yeah that's excellent stuff good news and you know to see the real actual numbers 
Uh, you know, it, it's it's amazing because, you know, the interest rates climbing, you know, that, that's got FOMO written all over it. Right. We're not going back to three point one, two, five. So if, if buyers are going to think that they're going to wait that out, it's the same like they're going to wait until prices come down. Right. It, yep. You'd be waiting a long time. I saw a quote somebody put out yesterday. I don't know where it originated from. So that's how it works. Uh, but it said, don't buy the market. You're not buying the market. You're buying the asset. Mm, right. Yeah. And, you know, if you need a, ho- a place to live, you, you're going to have to buy within your means based upon the interest rate and things like that. That six hundred thousand dollar house three months ago. Well, now you're getting what? Five forty. Right. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have to have that real conversation with your people. And I find that people are appreciative when you are real, that you don't dance and skirt around it or anything, because the headlines, every time I look at them, are completely wrong. There was a yeah. Forbes article that yeah. talked about the mass exodus from California that's not happening, right? Um, so people are moving, but there's plenty of people moving there too, right? Right. There's right. plenty of people that live there that need need to buy. So, um, you know, don't don't dig into the news and rely on the news too much. It's it's designed to it's a for profit company. Yeah. Um, just, it's like keeping current matters, but you're paid to deliver accuracy, right? right. They're paid to deliver clicks. So look at this information, deliver this information to your people with, with the videos, man. Uh, I, I think it's real powerful. Now, each area is going to be a little bit different. This is on a national forecast. But the economy, the economy is something very important that we all understand because it is a driving factor from the people that sit in the big white buildings, right? And I mean, Federal Reserve and, you know, banks and all these people at Wall Street, it's all melded in so to have a big understanding of it or a basic understanding of it i think is important and, and powerful and it's the same thing with watching the rates and you know one rate goes up and people are panicking it's like well that rate doesn't even have anything to do with your mortgage so yeah. what, 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 why are you panicking right and why are you set panic instead of panicking instead of playing into the panic instead of the you know the hyper vigilant kind of thing going on try to calm people down Mm. right and deliver a proper message and clarify i mean these are great youtube videos that you can make that are eight nine ten minutes on you know you hear the market you hear the markets crashing and blah 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 and interest rates are going and in this video we're gonna discuss exactly how that's not happening based upon economic data right uh, and then you can go in and build your whole video and do a longer version david just went 30 minutes with me or we're gonna go 30 minutes and three minutes um you use the same slides, right? You can use yeah. the same slides and then bring your local data into it. it. Really, you can do it. David just did it on Zoom like this. I mean, he's a master. He does it all day long. He can he recites this stuff in his dreams, I'm sure. Um, but you got to learn it too. And you can put this information out there. And I do believe that we should be stewards of good information in our yeah. communities. How yeah. else can you have an educated conversation with a developer or an investor or somebody else if you don't know the data? Because yeah. they're looking. They're yeah. looking. And Johnny, I think, you know, just to sort of echo what you said, be careful who you listen to. I, I think this is a time where people come out. I watched a, you know, a, a reel this morning that somebody sent me that somebody who um, you were saying homes are going to drop in value 30 or 40 percent you know, in the next six months. It's just not the, the fundamentals don't support it. You know, and, and I think being the educator, having the information to say, that's, that's just not, there's not a case for that. If somebody wants to make a case for it, I'll listen. You know, one of the things you can always do with somebody is say, why do you feel that way? Tell me why you believe that. And then let me show you what's happening um, in the real estate market, because what exists, everybody, when, when everybody hears recession right now, don't, don't miss this. They hear housing crash because of 2008. We've talked about it ad nauseum. Sometimes I'm like, we've talked about this a lot, Johnny. Should we even talk about it anymore? No, we have to talk about it more because people, that hear that word and that word's everywhere right now. And it's only going to continue in the fever pitch, you know, call for recession. That's what they hear. It's housing crisis. Yep. So that's it. A lot of weird things happening out there, but the market is still, I mean, despite rates going up, you know, don't freak out. Rates are still lower than when I bought my first house. Right. Uh, what, what was that? 5.2 or something you showed? 5.3. Yeah. It's uh, here's the interesting perspective that Johnny, I just, I just pulled some slides on it. That rate is higher than where we've been in the last decade. Let's acknowledge that, you know, the last 12 years or so, 
we've been higher than that rate. So, so anybody that's been in the market, there have been plenty of us that have had careers where we haven't seen rates this high. Let's just be clear. But that rate of 5.3 is lower than every decade prior going back to the 70s. It's all about perspective. And I'm not saying, you know, the old cliche in our business was, you know, interest rates were 15 or 20% back in the 70s. Totally get that and they were. But a lot of people just remember the last 10 years and this rate is higher. 5.3% though is not a, an unreasonable rate to finance a house at. You know, if you look at even the 90s, we're well above that. Look at the 2000s, well above that. Yeah, exactly that. So there's, um, there's that. There's so much we could talk about, but we're out of time. So what we want to do is say, if you want the slides, email David at david at keepingcurrentmatters.com. Yep. He'll send you over the slides. And if you want to try KCM for free, go to, is it trykcm.com? Go to trykcm.com and start a free 14-day trial. Check it out. There you go. 14 days, use the information, take a look at it. You're going to love it. Utilize the information and make leverage. Leverage. Yep. One of the things that was taught to me during my mentorship with one of the sharks was um, leverage. If you master leverage, you'll master the game. This is a leverage play. They're doing all the hard work. They got a team that knows what they're doing, that's out there researching, use their data, use their pretty graphs too, right? For your benefit to help you stand out and look like an educated, awesome go-to realtor. David, any final words? Just uh, use this information to be the knowledge broker. I think we need to be vocal now more than ever. You know, now more than this ever. is, I think the next 60 to 90 days, there are gonna be a lot of questions that people have in the market. Should I buy? Should I sell? What's gonna happen? We need to be educated. Yep, absolutely. Everybody, on behalf of Lab Code Agents, thanks for being here. David at keepingcurrentmatters.com. Get your slides. David, thank you for being here. See thank you. In two you. Weeks. All right. See you Peace back. Out.